All right, so for today's Sunday, as I'm getting things meal prep just for the week to have, you know, I want to have uh, fruits are easy. Can just grab the fruits. The, the main fruits that I really keep on me is I do a whole thing of bananas. And the reason I do so much is not because I eat that many bananas in a week, but I allow them to ripen for a couple different reasons. There's a couple recipes, which we'll see here shortly, that I utilize very, very ripe bananas for. But also I'll peel them and freeze them, and later I can use them for banana ice cream uh, in the food processor. But also I have two different types of uh, persimmons. I have pears, I have apples, I have kiwis, I have figs. I've got a bunch of dates uh, for things that I, that I use as well. And then I have different onions. You know, I have red onions, I have uh, sweet onions or white onions as well. And then I actually have four different kinds of potatoes. Um, I'm a big fan of these different kinds of potatoes. These are Japanese sweet potatoes. These are literally like a white cake. They're, they're incredible. Um, these are white sweet potatoes. These are regular sweet potatoes. And these are purple sweet potatoes. On the inside, they're literally completely purple. It's absolutely beautiful. And these are pretty much easy to keep throughout the week. You can bake them and do what you want to do with them. But honestly, for me, I just pop one in the microwave for like five minutes. Makes it really soft and it's ready for a meal. So I don't really do much with those as far as prepping goes. Obviously for the fruit, I don't do much either. What I'm actually gonna do is rice, and I don't really do typical white rice, although sometimes I do. Last week or whatever, I had uh, just some regular white rice. <clears throat> the reason I don't do regular white rice as much is more for the nutrient content. Brown rice is good and really gets all the praise, but if you had to really choose, I would even go more for wild rices, for the colored rices. This is actually a black rice. So we'll actually see here in just a minute. And the reason that I choose these is because these will tend to have five to 10 more, five to 10 times more antioxidants, which are, you know, basically cancer fighting agents. You need antioxidants in your diet than say brown rice or something else like that. So I'm very big on using things like this. So I'll just do like two cups and I measure it for a reason, not only for the purpose of knowing how much water to put in my rice cooker, which makes everything very, very easy, by the way. But I also mix in turmeric with my rice. Turmeric is one of the most powerful superfoods on the entire planet. Raw turmeric is really going to be very, very good for uh, what, it's, what it's famed for is anti-inflammatory, which it's obviously really big with like curries and things in India, which is the reason why they have these incredible benefits of, of eating these types of foods. But when you have something that's not raw, a turmeric that's not raw, it's going to really emphasize actually not only anti-inflammatory, but DNA protection, which DNA protection, protecting your DNA is going to keep you from cancers and from certain sicknesses, but also anti-aging. So it really actually in the long run will keep you feeling young, looking young. And so what I'll usually do per cup, I do just over a half teaspoon, a half teaspoon, and I'll mix it up so that the turmeric really gets mixed up so that there's nothing lumpy or anything like that whenever, it, uh, whenever it's cooking. So this is just easy. So you pop this in here, you know, in about 20 minutes, the rice will be going, but while that's going, I don't even have to pay attention to it. It'll do its own thing. Now I can go on and cook some other things. Okay, and now the, the next thing that I'll do, this is more for like say tacos or like a chipotle bowl. Even if you didn't want to do the tacos, you know, you can do your rice and your beans, your tofu, stuff like that. I'll do onions, peppers, and mushrooms. One of the main things I always hear is I don't have time. I'm gonna be honest with you, everybody has time. You have 24 hours, I have 24 hours. How much time people spend on social media, how, how much time people spend sitting before the TV, even if it's an hour a night. I'll take one hour of that time and just prepare you know, some food. Just find a little time to do it because the benefits of it is going to way outweigh the, oh, I need to you know, take an hour and a half out of my entire week to prepare these things and then they're already prepared. Now you're feeling good, you're just investing in yourself. You know, I, I just, I've never really agreed with I don't have time, quite frankly. You make time for what's important to you, it doesn't matter what it is. I agree. And, and quite frankly, the nutrition should be important to everybody. Nutrition should be important to everybody because we all eat. It's just important to take care of 
our bodies. It makes us, it can help us feel better, can help us operate better. For me, I know that it really helps me be able to get up in the morning. It keeps everything flowing. I'll do some cumin powder for this one. And I'll do this sweet and smoky rub. I don't really worry too, too much about sodium. And the reason is, is because I don't really add sodium to my foods. And so if I have a little bit, it's not a big deal, especially working out and drinking as much water as I do. I might put it on, you know, 350 for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I don't like to overcook my food. In fact, a lot of times I'll put it even lower than that. I might put it only on 200 and just allow it to kind of heat and cook a little bit. But I really like my food not to be overly cooked. So I kind of preserve certain nutrients and stuff like that. Not overcooking your vegetables, you're preserving the enzymes. You're preserving certain nutrients that really can get destroyed in the cooking process. There's a process with like cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables would be like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, horseradish, broccoli sprouts, cabbage, things like those and onions, which onions are not uh, a cruciferous, but you do what's called the chop and stop method, where when you chop them, actually by chopping them, cutting them, or even chewing them, there is an enzyme, or for example, in cruciferous vegetables, sulforaphanes that are being produced through them. And so they say, you know, for about 10 minutes, chop the vegetables and leave them. Don't cook them, don't heat them, don't do this, that, or the other, because you're allowing them to produce those enzymes, produce those those substances within them, and then you can cook them. Whereas if you do it beforehand, you actually lose most, if not all of the benefits from those foods. You know, it was interesting about a, uh, you know, when I got into ministry, I really put fitness on the back burner. I ended up getting really out of shape. I ended up getting a gut, losing a lot of muscle mass. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was totally opposite of what I had really kind of been for since I was 17 years old, you know, for the last 10 years. But I got my blood work done because, you know, at this point, for about three or four years up to last April, I mean, by last April, I mean, there was a point where I only worked out like twice in that entire year, those four months leading up to that. And even before that, the previous year, I remember starting in like July of 2020, you know, I would go weeks without working out and then work out like once a week, twice a week. I ended up getting, you know, like I said, really out of shape. I just was so busy with ministry and my focus was totally off from those things. And so uh, <clears throat> I got my blood work done in Houston at the old clinic I used to really go to and the nurse practitioner told me who had known me since my bodybuilding days so he's very familiar with me and he told me you know Nick your blood work's not good and showed me my blood work my testosterone was was so low my 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 prostate was still good my kidney function was a little high my insulin was high and you know, I was probably weighing like 230 pounds, whereas now I weigh like between 200 and 205. I'd really like to get down to like 198, honestly. But uh, you know, I'm like 200, 205, and my health was really off. My health was not, good, was not good. And so it was kind of a wake up call. And so I ended up watching a, a documentary and I just decided, you know what, I've done plant-based stuff before here and there for like a couple of weeks or a meal or whatever. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try it out. You know, I've done, I've done tons of meat and everything, nothing against meat, nothing against the animal products at all by any means. But you know, for me, especially as a bodybuilder, I took that to an extreme. You know, I was eating meat five, six times a day, maybe even more, seven times a day, heavy doses of it, you know? And so, um, I decided to go down more of a whole food plant-based diet. And in four months, um, literally in four months, it was, I think it was July. So April was when I first had it. And, uh, in July I got my blood work done again. And my nurse practitioner was absolutely mind blown. My testosterone doubled. My kidney function increased by over 30%. It dropped by a third. It was high to where it was good. My liver enzymes were absolutely perfect. My prostate went from being good 
to that of an 18 year old. It was absolutely perfect. Uh, my insulin dropped by a third. I dropped about 30 pounds and only four of which was muscle. Okay, so I dropped about 26 pounds of fat. All these different things within three or four months just from really, you know, switching my diet to different things. Now, granted, I probably could have done that, you know, also eating animal products if I would have just, you know, got things in order. But I just noticed how, how good I felt. And for me, it, it worked, you know. I've, I've enjoyed it ever since. Um, I also, you know, had really bad relationships with food. Too much sweets, you know, I would splurge on the weekends, you know, and eat myself sick. And this was a way that really kind of guarded that. And so through a lot of prayer and everything else, the Lord really led me to um, this type of way of eating because now I'm not splurging, you know. I eat with an abundance. You've gotten to see my, my meals. I mean, my burritos, I couldn't even close them. They were spilling out. You know, my breakfast is overflowing, you know, all these different things. So I'm being able to eat with abundance, but it's clean food that makes me feel good. And um, it really actually helped my relationship with food uh, begin to be in a much better position. And so for me, the whole food plant-based diet worked. And, and I, like I said, I really enjoy it. And now, because this is what my body's used to, I don't even crave any of the other foods. But, you know, there's also people that don't really have those, those types of problems. And so they don't have to worry about that. But this is just something that's worked for me. I'll do some taco seasoning, I guess, on this one. There's really no strategy to my seasoning. And so that'll be ready here in just a few minutes whenever I take out the other food. A lot of recipes that I'll do like certain desserts for, or even if they're not desserts, you know, obviously you use flour for it. And, and I might use wheat flour that I get from the store or whatever, but I'm really big on using oat flour. And something really simple that I just do is get some oatmeal. These food processes are awesome. You know, I have this food processor. I use it multiple times a day. This one and this one. You get all three of these with the with the top piece you can get all three on amazon for like 54 dollars to me they are just incredible to make my oat flour you just put oatmeal then boom you've got oat flour and this is what i'll use in my recipes for different things so i just kind of keep a little tupperware just always around with oat flour I do all my own almond butters, all my own peanut butters. And for me, whenever I do almond butters or peanut butters, I want to where the ingredients is just peanuts and salt or just almonds and salt. And the problem is a lot of the bottles will say all natural, but they're not all natural. They'll have the canola oil, they'll have palm oil, they'll have the sugar cane, they'll, all these different things in it. And so I want just the peanuts. I want just the almonds. And so if you actually look at those ingredients, you'll get a jar of almond butter that's about this big. And I remember I was walking through the store and it said $24. I remember here in Iowa walking through a store and it was $17. And I'm sitting there for a jar this big, $24 for almond butter or $17 or however much it is for the all natural peanut butter. It's, it's crazy. So I remember that day I said, you know what? I'm gonna try and make my own almond butter, my own peanut butter. And ever since then, I've been, sure enough, making my own almond butter and my own peanut butter, and it's absolutely as easy as can be. And so I'll do two cups, just for the sake of fitting this. And the peanuts that you want to get, these are just straight peanuts. They're not coated with canola oil or anything like that. They are roasted peanuts, though. And the reason you kind of want roasted when it comes to peanuts or almonds is it kind of allows them to smooth into butters easier. It brings out the oils a little simpler. <laughs> So now you have a creamy peanut butter, only peanuts. Now we're gonna make an almond peanut butter. So I'll do a cup of peanuts first. So now I'll take that out, put that in. So 
So now I have a very creamy almond peanut butter. And I don't stop with, with almond peanut butter. You know, like I said, I'll add the cacao powder sometimes, do a chocolate almond peanut butter. I'll do pecan nut butter. I'll do Brazil nut butter. Um, I really do all different kinds of nuts. The pecan nut butter, surprisingly, was one of my favorites. I was amazed at how good that actually tastes when it processes into a butter. It really brings out more flavor for the pecan. The pecan and the Brazil nut Brazil nut turns into a butter the easiest. Brazil nut will literally just melt within, within, a, within seconds. It's crazy. So the rice is done. Easy peasy. Now I've got rice for the week. I've got these vegetables done. Some other vegetables in there. <clears throat> now what I'm going to make is the base for when I do like my own version of like peanut butter cups. So what you really need is two very, very ripe bananas. The riper, the better, because the banana will end up being very, very strong. And now you just gotta first ripe or mash these. And then we'll do, with the two bananas, I'll do two heaping tablespoons of the oat flour that I made. And then, per banana, you wanna do about 100 grams of oatmeal, which is about one and one third cup. So we did two bananas, so we'll do two and two third cup. And you can use either maple syrup, but I use date syrup, just because the date syrup is really good because it keeps the fiber in there. It's really, it literally is just dates. And so per banana, you want to do like, like a heaping two tablespoons. So I'll do like a heaping four tablespoons because I did two bananas. Date syrup you can usually get. I don't know if you can get it at like a high V or HEB. You might be able to. But generally in my experience, it's been from a health food store. So you might be able to get it up in the north from like a natural grocer's. Uh, you could probably get it from high V in the health food section. I would guess, I don't know, maybe Pioneer Co-op down south, you know, or like on the west coast, uh, Sprouts will have it. I would not be surprised if Whole Foods had it. And so now you just got to mix everything together real well. So now I'm gonna make the, the bases for the peanut butter cups. So as we saw, this was just the oatmeal, the very, very ripe banana, date syrup, and the oat flour. And so what I'll do is pack it down and turn it into a cup. Make a hole in the middle. Go ahead. So we made them into cups uh, for the peanut butter cups, and so I'll put them in at 375 for like 15 minutes, maybe maybe closer to 20 minutes. We'll just have to see. I want them a little bit crispy on the top edges.
So now we'll take these out. Now I'll just start filling them with some uh, nut butter. And you really don't need more than like a tablespoon per cup. We'll do four of each one. Now I'll just do a straight almond butter. <clears throat> and generally what you want to do is put these in the freezer. That's actually where I store them is in the freezer. And uh, it'll, it'll harden the butter. This is the food that we've prepped so far. You know, we've got the rice, we've got two different sets of vegetables here. I've got tofu still from from another batch that I already cooked, but you can cook the tofu as well. I may end up cooking that tonight or tomorrow or something like that. But, uh, and then you have, you know, your potatoes and you've got the fruit already ready. You've seen the breakfast, stuff like that. So the food prepping doesn't really take very long, especially when you do things like the rice cooker. You know, you're not even doing that. You can literally leave, not only the room, you can leave the house and just allow it to be cooking in the rice cooker. So, you know, these types of things, you can put that in together. All these things doesn't have to take longer than an hour, 45 minutes. So, um, I hope that this helps you guys. I change it up every single week with the way I do things, get a big diversity. That way I keep it fun, it keeps it flavorful, so on and so forth. So, thank you guys, until next time.